legacy of the Cuban Revolution in Havana on the 1st of January 1999. That is exactly 10 years ago. And in that entire speech which I was reading recently, while we were preparing for the celebrations of the 60th anniversary, I found a reference which I find is very relevant to our discussion today. And I am quoting that. Uh, Fidel Castro said, the fact that the current economic order is unsustainable is evidenced by the very vulnerability and weakness of the system which has turned the planet into a gigantic casino and turned millions of citizens and sometimes even entire societies into gamblers, adulterating the function of money and investments, given that they pursue neither the production nor the growth of the world's wealth, but rather a means to make money with money. Such a deformation will inevitably lead the world economy towards disaster. So, what Fidel Castro said is, today, what is happening? You are using money to make money, divorced from production and the growth of the world's economy and wealth. And in 2009, we find the world's economy is already headed towards disaster. Today, you see the disaster happening all over the world. And what is that disaster? What did they do? They decided around this time in the 1990s, they said, we don't have to have any regulations on our stock market. We don't need to have any regulations. All the existing regulations by the government, by the government agencies, financial institutions. Because the philosophy which was brought of where there should be no state intervention or state regulation began to unfold in the United States of America from the mid-1980s when President Reagan was there as the president. From then onwards till the time of Clinton, step by step all the financial sector was totally deregulated. And they said that the best form of state is a state which does not interfere in the economy, the market must govern itself, the market is supreme, the market knows everything and the market will decide everything. And it is on that basis that you have banks like Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, all Goldman Sachs. And that also has said we will not remain an investment bank, we will become a regular scheduled bank like all other banks. We will take deposits, we will come under regulation, we are no more a bank which is called an investment bank. It changed this character. That is the collapse of the Wall Street model of finance capitalism. That is an economy and a financial sector which will run purely on the basis of the market. Free from state regulation, this was the Wall Street model of finance capitalism which was the Apex, the apogee of finance capital. This is the dream of finance capital. That is, finance capital says we recognize no country. We recognize no boundaries. In any country, we are to be free of any controls or regulation. Our money should go wherever it wants to go. Our money should get back or withdraw whenever we feel like it. Our money should go to the places where we can make quick profits without the governments of those countries interfering in any way by placing any restrictions on the flow of capital. It is this structure of finance capitalism which came into being in the last two decades of the 20th century in the United States of America and then spread to the other advanced capitalist countries and then imposed on the developing countries, including India, it is this system which collapsed with a great bang in September. Financial crisis. That financial crisis has today hit the real economy. The real economy in which we live. We don't live in that financial world. We are not putting billions of dollars, millions of dollars 
for investment for quick profit. All of us live in the real economy where there's industry, where there's agriculture, where the services sector, where goods are produced, they are sold and traded. We make our earned incomes, we earn our livelihood in the real economy. That real economy has gone into crisis all over the world. Today, the United States of America is in crisis. It has declared we are in recession. Britain has declared it's in recession. The whole of the European Union says we are in recession. Japan, the second biggest economy in the world after the United States of America, has declared itself in recession. So there is no center of the advanced capitalist world which is not in recession today. Now, of course, there will be economists, bourgeois economists who will tell us that recessions happen all the time. Yes, we recognize there is a cyclical crisis happening periodically in capitalism. That is the way capitalism gets rid of its weaknesses and gets strengthened. Or after the crisis, we recover. The capitalist recovery takes place. But what should be remembered is, today's global economic crisis is not an ordinary crisis. It is not the normal <coughs> cyclical crisis. Because the nature of the concentration and internationalization of capital that has taken place in the last three to three and a half decades is a new stage in capitalism. And that was finance-driven globalization. And that was finance-driven capitalism. So the finance part of that today, which was touted to be the way the entire world can progress rapidly, the linchpin of this capitalist system, which was the financial sector, and the financial sector deregulation, that whole edifice has now crumbled and collapsed. And that is why today you find the British government, and there is a special role for Britain, because Britain was, is the oldest imperialist power in the world. America is a later imperialist power. So Britain had taken to the same path as America with a great relation vigor in the time of Margaret Thatcher, when she was the Prime Minister in the 1980s. Along with Reagan in America and Margaret Thatcher in Britain, they opened the way for this deregulated form of capitalism, for doing away with the old Keynesian model of welfare state capitalism and saying now everything should be left to the market. What has happened in Britain today? You will be surprised. You will see advert advert advertisements for some of the British banks. One of the advertisements we always see recently in paper is Sachin Tendulkar has been measured for a suit to be made. And he's made an excellent suit is made for Sachin Tendulkar. And it says Royal Bank of Scotland. We make such very good clothes. And just like you make good clothes, we have very good banking. That Royal Bank of Scotland has gone bankrupt practically. And it has been taken over by the British government. It is a nationalized bank today. It is no more a private bank. The Lloyds Bank, which was a private bank, has become a British nationalized bank today. So the same Labour Party, which followed Thatcher and said, we will do exactly what Thatcher is doing. Tony Blair became